Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. All right, it's Friday, 10 o'clock spot. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and the guy next to me is downtown Jamie Brown, commercial real estate. The king of commercial real estate. How downtown, Jamie Brown? How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Thanks, Jay. So it's not only that you have dedicated your life, your professional life, to commercial real estate. Your son is doing that, too. Talk about it. Well, uh, my son, Kimo, is a, a junior at USC, and he uh, interned last year at Douglas Emmett Group, big owner in big, Hawaii. But, big, he, but big. he was in, in Santa Monica. And they own a lot of real estate in, in uh, Southern California. And this summer, he's going to be interning at East Hill Secured, which is kind of the, the apex predator in the uh, commercial real estate <laughs> world. So he, I, I, got, I got him fooled, too. He thinks it's a great profession. Well, the question is whether you're going to teach him or he's going to teach you, because hopefully, there could be a nexus here, you know? Hopefully the latter. <laughs> <laughs> so, J.D., let's talk about the market. Uh, you know, what provoked this show is you, you, you uh, distributed your report about the office market downtown, and I'm really interested to, to hear you roll that out for our, for our viewers. Okay, well, the exciting thing about the report is our office market has been stagnant for like 20 years. Rents are, base rents have been pretty static for 20 years. The rent you paid in 2000 is about the rent you're paying now. You're starting to scare me, Jamie. However, <laughs> there's three things that are occurring in 2019 that could change all that. Okay, let's talk about them. So, but uh, do you want to talk about the why or, or the, well, so, so the reason the market's stagnant is the vacancy slide. Um, so if you look at the vacancies through the markets mm -hmm. on Oahu, you'll okay, notice vacancies. the highest vacancies are the left two, uh, airport and the CBD, which stands for Central Business District. Mm -hmm. And really focus on the Central Business District. It stands out. It's got the most inventory, the most vacancy, a lot of vacant space downtown. That's what Central Business District is. And um, in the world of commercial real estate, it responds to supply and demand. If you've got a lot of vacancy and not a lot of demand, guess what? Rent goes down. Rent goes down. So let's go back to that chart so we can understand, the, unpack that chart. The, now, these bars are by area, am I right? That's right. So we're looking at different areas. And uh, the high one, like the one next to the, next to the left, um, the one next to the left, that's, that's really high. What, what area is that? So that's the CBD, which stands for Central Business District, or mm -hmm. downtown. Uh -huh. So it's 16.6%, which is really high. That's high. Yeah. And sort of there's a, a rule of thumb in commercial real estate is 10% is kind of the tipping point between a landlord's market and a tenant's market. So all the ones that are above around 10% are tenant's markets, where the tenants have the advantage and they get low rents and concessions and stuff like that. But when the vacancy kind of goes below 10%, it flips to a landlord's market. Uh -huh. Okay, so the, the really, there's two short ones there. One very short would be the fourth bar. What, what area is that? East Oahu. So if you want to go find space in Kaimu, office, this is office space in Kaimuki or Kahala or Hawaii Kai, there's virtually nothing available. And if you, and you're going to pay high rents. Yeah. Now, now the, the, the third from the right is not really all that low or that high, but it's noticeably lower than the average. Which, which area that's, is that? That's King Street. So that's a very, that, that, most of these markets are very small little markets with yeah. the exception of the CBD, Kaka'ako, and Kapilani. Yeah. And Waikiki. So uh, that's King Street. Not a lot of space there. Um, that uh, rents are... Are, are a little higher there because the, because the vacancy is low. So, I mean, it, wouldn't the market correct for this? In other words, if I looked at this chart and I, and I saw that a given area uh, was, um, you know, uh, uh, high, uh, low vacancy, low vacancy, right. and I'm an investor, a builder, you know, whatever, an, an entrepreneur who wants to take advantage of the disparity in those numbers you just showed us, I'd go and build something right away, wouldn't I? And why don't they do that in order to equalize these numbers? That's a great question. And it comes down to cost of construction. So right now, our rents in Honolulu have been, since the 90s, uh, too low relative to the cost of construction. So it's not economically feasible to build a new uh, multi-tenant office building. 
you have seen some owner users build stuff, but they have a long-term horizon and they think a little differently, but it's cost of construction. What effect does the condominiumization of a given rental office building have on all of this? In other words, uh, what was the one up at the head of uh, Alakea uh, Street? $1,100 Alakea. 1100 yeah. It turned into a condo. Um, what does that mean? Does it come off the market? Do we not care about vacancy and occupancy in a building like that? Because it's owned by somebody. Is that part of the, you know, the data? It's not part of our survey data. We just survey the multi-tenant office buildings. But that particular building does have a little bit of an effect on the downtown office market. Because you might have a, someone who otherwise might rent at Pacific Guardian Center or Pioneer Plaza will go buy their office condo at $1,100 a cab. But it's a very small effect. Yeah, OK. This is interesting. Do you make these compilations yourself? How do you get the numbers? We, um, we do a quarterly survey. Uh, we've been doing it since 1999. And um, I have a, an assistant who pulls the data, and then I spend my own time you know, going through it. Because it's really hard to get the data correct. Uh, typically, tenants will get double counted. so. What happens if a tenant rent is going to move from, say, uh, Bishop Place to Pacific Guardian Center? Until the Pacific Guardian Center, once the space is leased, they remove it from their their listing of vacancies, and so it looks like Pacific Guardian Center is leased up, and they haven't left Bishop Place yet. So you have to go through and kind of say, oh, no, who's moved, in order to adjust the numbers to be accurate. Mm, so it's a moving target. Yes. <laughs> you have to be watching this on a fairly frequent basis yeah. to get the gestalt feeling about it. That's and right. And you need that in your practice. I mean, if I'm a client and I come in, either a landlord or a tenant, um, you know, this kind of information is very interesting to me to appreciate the rent, whether it's fair, to appreciate where the, where the locations are that I, that I should consider it. Especially because this informa release information, unlike sa property sale information, is not public. Ah, true. It's not like you can go into the uh, multiple listing service and get this from a public book or, no. or you know, have, have a, a friendly uh, residential broker, you know, tell you about it. No, this is among a very small group of people, the commercial brokers, all you guys like walk on water. I know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> We've got you fooled too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's, go to, let's go to prices now. Let's go to rents. You had another chart on okay, that. Okay, yeah, the rent slide. So if you look at the rent slide, you notice the left two bars are some of the lowest total rents in Honolulu or mm -hmm. on the island of Oahu. And those happen to correspond to the two bars on the vacancy slide that had the highest vacancy. So this chart is also by area. It's a geographical same, chart just as well. Same, okay. yes. Yeah, same geographic areas. The bars are the same bars. Is it a perfect correlation, or is it a little looser than that? It's, it's looser. And what gets lost in, in these charts is the massive impact of the CBD or downtown. I mean, downtown has half of all the space, the office space on the island. What are we talking about? Two, three million square feet? The, the total is about uh, 11 million square feet. 11 and, million? Oh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't been watching. There you go. Yeah. And downtown's five, you know, five and a half of that. Okay. Oh, okay. Five and a half of that. Yeah, so, so five and a half of the, of the 11, and then, then you, you, know, you throw in Kapiolani, Kakako, and Waikiki, and you get to 80% of all of our office inventory is, like, right here. Yeah. So, um, but that, that chart uh, shows the correlation, however loose it might be. Um, but what about the drift you mentioned? Uh, it changes. It's dynamic. It's always dynamic. Markets are always dynamic. Um, so what is the dy dynamic? Is it going up? Is it going down? Uh, is, it, is it still flat? You mentioned that it has been relatively flat. And there were three, I need to know about this, there were three factors, three events, three phenomenon, phenomena, uh, you know, that we need to consider to examine the, you know, the dynamic of the, of the numbers of vacancy and, for that matter, rent. Yep. Um, it, you know, to summarize the office market, the occupancy or vacancy, which are the same, same or flip uh, different sides of the same coin in our market for the last 20 years have stayed roughly static. You know, you do graphs, it's just a flat graph. And because there's been no supply of new inventory, in fact, there's actually been a removal of inventory. So, so Waikiki is a really great example of what could happen. 
Uh, do you remember the Waikiki Trade Center? Sure. Which is now the Hyatt Centric. So that had almost 200,000 square feet of office space in a Waikiki market, which was like a, um, a little over a million square feet of total. And when you looked at it, at one point, the vacancy in Waikiki hit 20, 20 or 21 percent. And virtually all of that vacancy was in Waikiki Trade Center. And rents were around $3 a foot. That's incredible pressure on the landlord, isn't it? That's way over that 16% you talked about earlier. Way over. Yeah, yeah. And so rents were about 3 bucks a foot. So they, they took that, that um, building and that inventory out of the market. And rents jumped to four over $4 a foot as vacancy dropped from 20% to under 10%. And they took it out of the market by doing what? Converted it from office space to um, uh, a hotel. Okay, no, no offices, all hotel rooms. That's right. Which actually was a, may I say, I hate to use this term, but a, a higher and better use, don't you think, in Waikiki? Absolutely. Get more than $4. Yes. For sure. Yeah, you're getting oh. premium rents down there because yeah. there's no space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a tenant who wants to be in Waikiki, you're going to have to pay up. Yeah, so this is really interesting. So a landlord, aside from this problem we mentioned about, you know, the cost of construction and all that, a landlord has to be Akamai about changing the use without rebuilding. I mean, right. I, I'm sure there was a lot of remodeling going on to make it into hotels, but it wasn't have to rebuild the whole building. And therefore, it's a lot cheaper than starting from the ground up. And mm -hmm. so a landlord can do these things. I suppose, I, not that this would happen, I suppose you could go the other way, too. You could take a perfectly good hotel and make it into office, although no one would ever do that. No? Right. I mean, there's more demand for hotel rooms than there is for office yeah, space. Well, wait till the next flood, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or rising sea levels. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, so that's one factor you mentioned. There were, other, there were two other factors. Well, so, well the converse, so, the, so that's, that's the elephant. Okay. So the exciting thing about the market right now is we've had really nothing to talk about for the last 20 years because everything has been static. Just and rents downtown have been what? Between what? A dollar and a dollar twenty-five, a dollar fifty. Well, no, like no. Ba base rents. So, so the base rents, which is so, there's rents are two pieces. There's the base rent that the landlord collects plus what they call the operating expense or CAM. Yeah. Just talk about rent now for a moment. Yeah. So, so the base rents have stayed static around a buck and a quarter to maybe a buck fifty. Maybe a dollar to a dollar fifty in that range for twenty years. Yeah, that really is interesting because you look back and say, mm, it wasn't that much different five or ten or fifteen years ago, and right. we're still in that zone. It's almost a, a comforting thing for a tenant <clears throat> to be able to, you know, predict that it's going to stay in that zone. <clears throat> But you're here to tell us but, it's but, not going to stay in that zone. But the tenant has paid more because guess what? Right. The CAM or operating expenses have gone up because it's our friend, <laughs> real property tax, our friends okay. down at the city council okay. right. have uh, not see, raised residential yeah, right. rates, but they've raised commercial rates. Yeah. So, and then uh, electricity for air conditioning, fuel prices have gone up, labor for janitorial, for security. So the tenants are paying more in total rent because the CAM has gone up. Right. But the, the landlords are collecting the same thing they've been collecting. Right. So they Except don't, they for don't parking, make... which has gone up. Yeah. Yeah. They make more on parking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another profit yeah. center. But, you know, it's really interesting that, um, you know, these expenses grow up. And sometimes, I'm sure you've seen this, they come down. Like, for example, fuel. You know, in the um, calculation of, um, of operating expense in the in the year following the year, the, the subject year, um, you could you could actually have a reduction in the cost of energy. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen once in a while. And then you know what that tells you is, oh my God, it could be operating expenses could be flexible enough to come come down, but it's not true. It's a deception because in <laughs> fact, in fact, most of them go up. All That's the time. right. And the tenant. Um, even though the landlord doesn't have a benefit of this, the tenant winds up paying, paying more. more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Insurance. Insurance. So we yeah. we get a disaster with big insurance payouts. The insurance is going to go up, and that's going to get that's in your cam too. Yeah. 
Uh oh. <laughs> so what what is uh, operating expense down downtown area on the average? Roughly what? what roughly what about pay? a interesting thing is you walk into a building today, you're going to pay, or you're, they're going to ask you to pay a buck fifty in base rent and a buck fifty in cam. Yeah. So you, sir, for an even three bucks or thereabouts. Before we go to the break, can we talk about those other two factors you mentioned? Sure. So the other two factors, other than the we had the conversion, which we'll talk about after the break, because that's a big one. Yeah. The other two factors is um, the, um, oh, HPU, Hawaii Pacific University, is moving uh, about 100,000 square feet of its occupancy to Waterfront Plaza and a little bit to Pioneer Plaza. And so that's going to have a big impact. And then the other one is um, American Savings Bank's campus across from Ma'ala Park and uh, impact, they're moving a bunch of people out of rented space to that space. So does that affect their, uh, their space in Bishop Square? Actually not, they're having HECO move, use that space. Oh, yeah. So they, don't ha they actually don't have a lot of space in, in Bishop Square, even yeah. though they've, they've named the building after them. Well, anyway, so um, we, have, we have changes going on with these three factors. And when we get back from this break, uh, let's talk about um, how those changes are going to affect things. Okay. Up or down, the landlord or tenant. How exciting. It's like looking into the crystal ball with downtown Jamie Brown. We'll be right <laughs> back. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch, uh, for our mission of empowerment, we aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Yeah, business in Hawaii. Downtown Jamie Brown. Wow, so exciting. You know, you know, there was this government building on Richard Street across the bandstand. Yes. And it was, um, you know, it was involved in some asbestos for like 20 years. Right. And now, is it coming back? Is the, it yeah, the, prin the Princess Kamamalo building, about 70,000 feet. And as I mentioned, as I said before, there was no, there's really been nothing built since First Hawaiian Center in 96 that's multi-tenant, except there's a bunch of owner-user buildings, that being one, and they pulled, um, the, the effect of that building was pulling occupancy out of some of the class, what we call class B and C buildings. You know where Roots and Relics is? That building on Richard Street, um, 850 Richard, tenants moved from there. Uh, they also moved from, I believe, the Malim building. Um, so there was an impact. So it created vacancy in the CBD. Yeah. Yeah, and but that takes us to the whole question of government, you know? I mean, it, 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 was, it became clear back when that um, the state of Hawaii was going to take huge amounts of office space downtown. Is that still the case? Um, how does the Kamamalu building affect that, you know, in terms of the, their appetite for taking office space in regular office buildings rather than in state buildings? Um, you're right. Government, um, you know, city city, state, and federal keep growing in their footprint of office space. And they tip, you know, in years past, would rent private office space and reduce our vacancy. However, in this last sort of cycle, they've created new space outside, which has absorbed that demand. So they get the Princess Kamamalo building, and then NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, built a huge 150,000-foot building on Fort Island, and they moved out of a ton of space at Pacific Guardian Center, 1601 Kapiolani and Hawaii Kai, creating vacancy. 
Uh, the FBI built their building in Kalailoa, and they created a vacancy in the federal building, which then drew tenants out of private buildings. So, so the government occupancy um, it definitely affects. Yeah. And, yeah. and if they create space, it creates vacancy. For yeah, them. right. And it could be by surprise, and it could yeah. be, relatively speaking, and it could be, you know, large amounts of space. Yeah. Um, let's go back to what you said you were going to cover some more, and that's the conversion. Okay, so so the big, well, there's the three things. Mm -hmm. So the one negative thing that will hurt the market a little bit is American Savings Bank's new building across from Ala Park. That's mm -hmm. 135,000 square feet, 600-something employees. They're going to move out of uh, some space that they're renting in 677 Ala Moana, the former Gobomb building. Um, the uh, Chinatown um, and a bunch of other places. So they'll have a little bit of a negative effect. They'll increase vacancy a little bit. And they have this little building next to Bank of Hawaii and that they're going to put on the market that they own, that little black building. And that's, you know, probably a good office condo conversion. So that'll hurt the market a little bit. However, that's probably offset by Hawaii Pacific University's move to fill up vacancy at Waterfront and Pioneer. But the really big one is a Bishop Place, the 1132 Bishop Street, the former That's First Hawaiian building. Towers, 460,000 square feet, yeah. that is slated to be converted to residential rentals downtown, nice rentals. So if you take out of maybe 800,000 feet of vacancy that's in um, the downtown area, and you take more than half of it off the market, that will take that 16.6 .6 vacancy number, and it's going to put it, guess what, below the magic 10% tipping point, and the market will go from a tenant's market to a landlord's market. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. But a big question, sort of like in the stock market, they say the stock market, you know, builds in news about future events into current prices. Um, does that happen in the real estate, in the commercial real estate market? Does it happen here? In other words, if I hear there's going to be a conversion in 1132, and, 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 and I know that's going to have a profound effect in dumping space, or rather subtracting space off the office market, is that right? right. Um, then I should adjust myself at some point. Why not adjust myself right now? Or, or do I wait? How does the market react? Um, I think it's going to, it's going to react. Uh, the owner of the of a Bishop Place is Douglas Emmett Group, which also owns Bishop Square and Harbor Court. So they have a sort of a double positive effect if they convert. Then that helps them fill up space at those office buildings. They haven't um, um, they they haven't announced the, the their decision on doing this conversion yet. Mm -hmm. I, I guess they're still working through some details. I th but the mar the word's getting out in the market. You haven't seen landlords um, raise rates yet, but I think there's a lot of landlords out there that are just waiting and salivating over the opportunity to, to raise rents. Sure, they do it as soon as they can. Yeah, so yeah. you haven't seen it yet, but if I was a tenant, yeah. I'd be looking at my office space situation now because it's it's about to happen. The, the lag time till reality, though, is gonna be like three years anyway, right? Probably. They're talking about taking, you know, a number of floors at a time as oh. tenants vacate. They're sure, not going to wait. Not? They're not going to vacate the whole building. Yeah, sure. Why not? You can do yeah. that. One, one thing also is that uh, you have 1080, 1088 and 1188 on right. Bishop Street. Those Bishop Street there, and they're both AC Ducey buildings. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here on Think Tank. Yeah, you heard it. <laughs> Is this going to be an AC Ducey building or just residential? Just residential. Mm. And Douglas Emmett, you know, it's a publicly traded REIT, um, well funded. They're going to do, um, they're going to create a great um, rental mm. project downtown. So, so for people who want to live downtown and rent a nice apartment downtown, mm. This is going to be a great opportunity. Yeah, well, that, that you know, raises a couple of points. Gee, I wish we had more time for this conversation. Um, a couple of points. One is, if I see, an, you know, I want downtown. Chinatown has not realized its promise. Chinatown, because of that, uh, you know, parking requirement, uh, no developer goes in there and space is not being converted, and it's either junk or it's so expensive nobody can touch it. Uh, so there's, there's no great move into Chinatown. 
um, this could be a great opportunity for those people who would like, as you said, like to live downtown. But, but because of that, it could be that what might otherwise be affordable, right, it's not affordable anymore. It's way expensive. A lot of market, market to pressure by, by potential buyers. What's going to happen there? Well, I would think the, you know, the cost to convert that building are going to be high, and they're going to do a, uh, they're going to do a first-class job of it. So it's not going to be affordable rentals, but it's going to be rentals for you know executives and middle managers who want to be downtown and can afford it. So it's going to bring you know probably 500 more people downtown 24/7. This is good. Which is really good. And uh, but we do need more affordable uh, rentals. I don't think Bishop Place is going to be it. But uh, and people say, well, how are they going to fill it? I think there's a lot of demand. Well, there's a I, lot of I, people who don't who want to be downtown but can't. There's nowhere to rent. Absolutely agree. You know, and it will help Chinatown. Yes, with, with all the business in Chinatown. It will it will really be terrific to have the crowd. You know, when HPU came in, you know, and they bought Aloha Tower and. All these kids, students walking up and down Fort Street Mall. It changed the character of Fort Street Mall, you know. Um, for so the, if you for have the a, better. For the better. Yeah. Oh, it's really very pleasant. I mean, it's one of the reasons that Pioneer, in my view, is so aesthetically successful is because of those kids walking up and down the street, you know, yeah. um, instead of the, you know, the, the, the crowd that was here before. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you have 500 new, relatively uh, middle class or, or above, uh, occupying this new converted building, 1132, that's going to that's gonna have the same good effect on the quality of life in downtown. Uh, absolutely. Think of the restaurants, shopping. We won't roll up the, red, the, the carpet at, at 5 o'clock and everyone go home. Yeah. Well, we only have a minute or two left, Jamie, and I wanted to get to the bottom line if I could. Uh, the bottom line in this context is why do I care? Why do I care about this? Is this going to affect my life uh, in Maui? Is it going to affect my life in uh, East Oahu, although you did refer to that in, in terms of the market? Um, you know, is this, is this something that has an effect statewide? Does it have an effect on our economy? Um, does it have an effect on bringing investment and business into the state from outside? Does it help young entrepreneurs? Why do I care? I think, well, I think it goes with all. If you look at what's going on in, in the economy, I, I just did a report. Um, it's amazing the breadth and the width of, of construction going on. And it's not, it's public, it's private, it's high rise, it's single family, it's renovations, it's infrastructure, it's new builds, it's, it's rentals, it's condos. So, and all of that means new investment in Hawaii, upgrading facilities. And the more new investment we have, I think that benefits all of us. Yeah. And, 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 you know, having empty, vacant office space doesn't benefit really anybody. Yeah. If we fill that office space with productive use, I think it benefits us all. Is there a critical mass magnetic kind of attraction? In other words, <clears throat> if, I, if I say that the downtown office market or the office market is going to go to a, a better level of maturation, if you will, of use, of rents, of sophistication, um, does that does that gather other tenants? Does that affect uh, you know investors from outside the state? Uh, do you foresee a more robust um, market experience in Hawaii for office space? I've, oh yes, absolutely. It's gonna. What'll happen is it'll push rents up, which tenants won't like, but that will allow owners to reinvest in buildings because they. Right now, it's hard for them to reinvest in an office building because the rents are so low. But if you're collecting higher rents, you can then reinvest in your property. We might be able to build more boutique buildings mm -hmm. or mixed-use buildings. Um, so I think it, I think it benefits all, us all. Rise. All yeah. Well, I'm left with one impression: downtown Jamie Brown. It is a moving target. There are things happening. It's kaleidoscopic in its own way because so many factors play against so many other factors that you have to come back and tell us more as it goes on because this is, this is not going to be static for another 20 years, guarantee. Absolutely. Thank you. Downtown Jimmy Brown. <laughs> All right. Commercial real estate. Oh, okay. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>